Right, so, oops. Okay. So what you normally do, um, th there's various ways you can, you can get the, the patient nicely positioned for, for an ankle block. Um, oh, one of the problems is going to be needling and bringing the needle in from posterior. Um, and so it's often quite helpful to have the, the calf on a you know, block of some sort just to lift the ankle up a little bit and then you've got a little bit more easy access. Once you've done that, you can pretty much sit at the end of the bed and I tend to, you can't do it with this bed, but just sit with my legs underneath the bed. Um, and if the, if the patient's reasonably mobile and if they can internally and externally rotate the hip okay, you can just move the leg around and it's fine. Um, if, they're, if, if they're a little bit less mobile and they can't do that with their hip, then you can just get them to lie on one side or the other. But just, I'm kind of lazy and I just like to sit in one place and do my block. Um, so starting with a tibial first. So Joe, if you could just r rotate your leg out, that's great. So as you say, this is the biggest nerve. It's the one um, that supplies um, the medial border of the foot, the, the sole of the foot. Um, so we'll have the left-hand side of the screen as anterior. Um, and the right hand side of the screen is posterior. I'll just find my pen and then I can point. So this is medial malleolus here. And scanning posteriorly, this is Achilles tendon over here. So the first thing we do is look for the um, posterior tibial artery. And so I'm going to hold the, um, hold the probe really still. If you keep scanning up and down, because it's a small artery, you just see the movement of the probe and not the artery. So small arteries hold it really still. It's not hugely clear, but you can see that's where the, um, that's where the posterior tibial artery is there. And then they're going to relax a little bit of pressure. And there's often a couple of veins. You can see one either side that, so that's very characteristic. Um, surprisingly normal anatomy, Joe. So that two, two veins there, um, and we're looking for the tibial nerve immediately posterior to that. Um, so the tibial nerve you can see here is this is this structure sitting there. So you can see it's just hooking underneath the artery a little bit, and it's coming around there. Um, so in terms of um, needling, um, we we tend to needle from posterior, but you can see the problem I'm going to have is actually getting in over the Achilles. So if I'm scanning like that, I'm showing you a lovely picture there, but I'm not going to really to be able to needle because my needle will be coming in from here. Um, and no patient thanks you for sticking a needle through their Achilles. Um, so what I'll need to do is just bring my probe a little bit further anteriorly so I'm not going to needle through the Achilles. Um, and you can see that if I, if I had Joe's um, leg lifted forward on the, um, uh, on the bed a little bit, I'd be able to get my hand into the needle a little bit better. Um, we can't, the, the natural angle to needle would be to come in from here, wouldn't it? And that looks like it'd be, it'd be dead easy. The problem is that this is a tibial nerve here, um, and you've got two tendons here, tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus. That's Tom and Dick, you know, in the old mnemonic, Tom, Dick and Harry. Um, so you don't need to remember the names particularly, but the reason you can't needle from anterior is the tendons are in the way, um, and also the arteries in the way there as well, and the vessels, aren't they? So. Um, you just have to um, have to try and get a way of needling from posteriorly. Now, if I scan down, down the way, this is flexor hallucis longus, longus, the, um, the, the muscle underneath. And you can see just un within the body there, we're starting to get the formation of the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. longus. Um, so this is the Tom, Dick and Harry, and this is the H, it's the Harry bit. Um, and the reason that this, um, this is important is you can see the tibial nerve sitting nicely up here above the fascial layer out with um, the, the muscle. Um, but actually, in terms of what it looks like, the tendon looks pretty like a nerve at that level. Um, now, if, you, if you're blocking, um, I'd say, I don't know, 1 in 30, 1 in 40, something like that, Steve, maybe, um, the, the nerves around the other side. Um, of the of the artery, it's not hugely common, but it does happen. Um, but of course, the tendon will still be there. So you'll look, you'll see the tendon, um, and, um, and and you'll try and block it. So just be aware that there's a tendon there. It's a close distractor for the nerve. That's why it's important. So that's tibial. Um, if you can just uh, rotate your other foot round. The next one we'll look at is the um, the deep uh, fibula or deep perineal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little bit lower down. Um, and we're going to look at the anterior tibial artery. So we've looked at the posterior tibial artery, tibial artery already. That's the anterior tibial artery. 
you can see the slightly um, concave surface of the talus here. So I'm, I'm scanning over talus. I'm going to go a little bit more uh, proximally. The talus disappears. I go through the ankle joint, follow the artery, um, and I come up to sit on top of the um, on top of the distal um, uh, tibia here. So that's the um, convex surface you can see there. That's the anterior tibial artery there, and just sitting on the lateral side there, it's a tiny little nerve, um, is, the, is the deep fibula. This is the one that supplies the web space. If I scan proximally a little bit, what you normally see is it hooks over the top, so it kind of, it, it, it stretches out, and you get these little hypoechoic uh, hypo dots in it usually, and it just, it just rotates over to, be, to lying on top, of the, on top of the artery there. It's kind of back down the way, and can you see it just, it rolls off the artery, and then just lies on the lateral side just there. Um, so that's an easy one to block because we can block it from the lateral side um, in plane, um, you know, two or three mils, and that's, that's all we need for that. That's, that's great, nice and easy. Probably worth saying, isn't it? No, it's not, and it's not always lateral at that level. No, you, yeah, that absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It pretty much hooks over at some stage. Yeah. So depending on where you're scanning it, sometimes it'll be medial and come lateral, and sometimes it'll be lateral. And come yeah, lateral. yeah, yeah. More commonly, I think, like this, the level you're at yes, yeah. The, the, I think that this is the, this is a really kind of uh, classical characteristic appearance. But yes, Steve's right. It, it is variable. They're you know, this is if you look at the. Um, I'll I'll just reduce the depth a little bit there because um, we don't need m quite that much depth. So this is 1.8 centimeters. So that's a centimeter. So that's you know it's about a millimeter across that nerve. It's a tiny little um, peripheral sensory nerve, and so it's variable where it sits. No. Yeah, that's a yeah, that was a nice one. Yeah. Uh, but if you scan up and down with the artery, you can pretty much usually uh, see something hooking over at some stage. So one of the more tricky ones, that's what the kind of key is, I think. So next, um, superficial fibula. Um, so this is the one that supplies the dorsum of the foot and spreads out. Um, and um, in some ways, this is the most difficult one because it doesn't have a vascular structure associated with it. So we need to find some other way of kind of focusing in on the area anatomically that we know it's going to lie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just proximal to the lateral malleolus there. So you can see the bony shadow of lateral malleolus there. Um, so we've got two sets of muscles. Posteriorly, um, we've got these two muscles. I sometimes think they look a little bit... I've got a bit of dropout shadow either side, but it looks like a little bit like a cycle helmet in, in, in cross-section. Um, and this is the tendon across here of pronius longus. Um, and then this, the body of this muscle here is pronus brevis. Scanning anteriorly, um, and I'll just give us, uh, actually it's fine, um, you get a much squarer shaped muscle, which is extensor digitorum longus, that's EDL. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan proximally, and if you watch the two groups of muscles, um, the perineal muscles here and um, EDL there, they, they tend to kind of come together over the top. The fibula dives down out of the way. Um, I'm coming back down again now, and when when they, as the muscle comes together, they form a little kind of V-shaped groove in between the two, and that's a really kind of natural place, a real natural place for the um, superficial fibular nerve to, to lie. Um, and this this in fact is Joe's superficial fibular nerve lying here. As I scan down again, watch the nerve here. It's just coming. It, it has to it has to breach this fascial layer because it's going to supply skin. It's just breaching the fascial layer there. And in actual fact, Joe's, can you see, watch those two hypoechoic areas there. Can you see them just spreading out and coming together? So Joe's nerve's splitting just as it comes through um, that, that superficial fascial layer. So it's in two parts there. And then back into, back into that V-shaped groove. So um, it's difficult because it doesn't have a, an artery and it's small, but it's, it's you know, it, it, as long as you, you, you think about your anatomy, it's quite easy to kind of focus in on that. Um, scanning more proximally, you can still see it there. Can you see it there? And at this level, it's just diving off down into um, the body of Peronius longus now. Can you see that? So we can scan it. And if we want, if I had enough gel and we had time, we could scan it all the way up to, you know, become um, the, you know, the common up to the common fibula around the back. So. so there it is in the body of the muscle. And then just coming down, up the way, into that V-shaped groove we talked about. And they're, they're just splitting off into two branches. So that's superficial fibula. So 
If we're doing medial forefoot surgery, first metatarsal head surgery, um, that's all we'll do, tibial, deep and superficial fibula. Um, if we're doing more lateral surgery, then we need to do the sural as well. Um, so, Joe, can you just try and get that down? That's brilliant. Um, so what all, all I'm going to do now is just scan a little bit more posteriorly. So this is um, this is the cycle helmet again, um, longus and brevis. Um, I'm going to carry on going posteriorly. So there's um, peronis brevis. Um, there's the Achilles tendon. And we're going to take all the depth off now. That's as low as we can go. Um, and you can see this hypoechoic area there. That's the short sphenus bone. Um, so there's a little kind of saddle-shaped fascial layer that goes between peronis brevis underneath the shorts of Venus and then back over the Achilles tendon. Um, and as I scan proximally, what you see is that vein will go, can you see it just hooking over the Achilles tendon there and then coming back down the way. And the nerve lies in, in that little fascial compartment. Um, and in Joe, it's lying just here. Can you see that? So it's, just, it's just slightly speckled just round, round there. Um, sometimes it lies the other side, and sometimes the nerve leads the, the, the vein over the Achilles. Sometimes the, the vein leads the nerve, as in this case. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's a really kind of tightly contained little anatomical space. Um, so all I need to do is drop a needle um, down into, into here, um, and, uh, and it will fill that little space with local, and you'll get a good sural nerve block. Um, the only thing you have to be a little bit careful about is not to get, you know, peroneus um, longus tendon as it comes over here because that's sore as you, as you nick it. So it's one that if, if it's almost better to do an outer plane approach and just drop onto the nerve and from, from lateral. Um, and that's it. Four nerves. Um, Saphenous um, doesn't normally supply past the ankle and we don't normally block that for four, for four foot surgery. Um, uh, thanks a lot.